The Elders and Youth Project is designed to bring elders and youth together in an environment to revive and encourage traditional and cultural events which have been eroded and compromised over the centuries due to colonization. One of the main teachings in Aboriginal communities was passed on through oral traditions and taught by watching and learning. Youth and elders gathered where a way of life was passed on through storytelling, creating and building their wigwams, living off the land, learning language, listening, and respecting all people. These teachings were rooted in what we call the seven sacred teachings. Due to centralization, residential schools, and other government policies, Aboriginal culture was almost wiped out through disease, bounties, forced assimilation, and separation of families. The erosion of unity and solidarity caused the Aboriginal culture to suffer drastically. The goal of this project is to connect the youth and elders together, to create a starting place to talk about the old ways, create stories, and build lifelong relationships based on the seven sacred teachings. The partners involved in this project are the Aboriginal Affairs, the Native Council of Nova Scotia, the Native Council of Nova Scotia Youth and Elder Members, and all the Native Council staff. Halifax Regional Municipality is another partner, also known as the HRM. Drum workshops and basket-making workshops were held with the Youth and the Elders as well as school staff, including Aboriginal student support workers, teachers, principals, and other members of the local Aboriginal communities. VCLA, which is the Valley Community Learning Association, located in Kenful, provided space for workshops. Through a partnership with Nova Scotia Community College and the VCLA, drum workshops were hosted with these two partners to allow youth to make their own traditional drum and learn the teachings through traditional ceremony. PeopleWorks, located in Colebrook, provided space for youth and elders to gather to practice the seven sacred teachings through smudge ceremony, moccasin, and drum workshops. After careful consideration as to how the camps would be organized, we decided that there should be meetings with elders, the respected knowledge keepers, to express their concerns, their ideas, and their knowledge in a way that would have a lasting impact on both youth and elders in involved in this project. During these meetings, elders expressed the importance of traditional teachings. After several of these meetings, there were themes that arose. The themes were those of integrity, safety, dignity, and proudness. One thing that was discussed in each of the meetings was the seven sacred teachings and how they could be integrated into the project. This would strengthen the relationships, create solidarity, love, and unity to ensure that these gatherings will continue for years to come. During the months of November and December, we attended zone meetings to explain what the project was about and to get the word out. Elder meetings were also held in this time period to come up with the strategies and ideas to bring the youth and the elders together. These meetings included traveling from Yarmouth to Cape Breton. Although there was excitement and people were willing to gather, there still proved to be barriers and gaps on how to bring the youth and elders together. The first camp was held in December after I received a call from a lady who had been at one of the previous gatherings. She had two youth who were doing a school project on Aboriginal foods. 
They traveled to my home from the HRM. The gathering lasted approximately three hours and included storytelling, traditional foods, recipe sharing, laughter, and the seven sacred teachings. Over the duration of the project, relationships between youth and elders evolved, breaking down some of the barriers. This happened through storytelling, sacred ceremony, and crafts, just to name a few of the traditional teachings. Elders who participated shared stories of their experiences of being Aboriginal. These experiences included, but were not limited to, the ceremonial pipe, their craft, and their embedded knowledge. Along the way, we met Aboriginal peoples and non-Aboriginal peoples, all of whom contribute to the continuation of the seven sacred teachings for the next seven generations. I would like to thank Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development for sponsoring this project. Native Council, Chief and President Lorraine Augustine for hiring me. My sister Rowena Landry for working with me on this project. All the staff at Native Council and all the board members. All the partners, new and old. Brian Cottom and his wife Kelly from Wild Lupin Media. And last but not least, all the elders, the youth, local community members, and all who were involved in making this project a success. I love you all. Walalio. Well,